No sport celebrates and cherishes stories like baseball. There are countless tales about the major leagues and the national pastime. The luckiest man on the face of the earth. But there remains an untold story. An all-American story of a league created out of necessity that would ultimately become a driving force for change. A league that didn't care what color you were or where you came from. The only thing that mattered was, can you play? And these men and women could absolutely play by setting new standards and breaking barriers. They would change the game and this country forever. These are the legends. These are their stories. This is the Negro Leagues. Catching here on the field of legends is the legendary Josh Gibson. Who many would call the Black Babe Ruth. But there are others who saw Josh swing that big bat of his who would call Ruth the white Josh Gibson. Gibson was incredible. But Josh wasn't just a great power hitter. Josh was a great hitter with power. Lifetime batting average of 354, and in head-to-head -head competition against major leaguers in countless exhibition games, hit over 420. Josh Gibson was going to steal your 20, 25 bases or more to go with that big bat of his. And what makes it even more remarkable for those of you who are baseball fans, he was doing this as a catcher. Catchers don't do that because the position's just so physically demanding. It beats your body up. Well, Josh wasn't a good catcher. He was a great catcher, rifle arm. He was throwing guys out from the crouch back in that era. Big, powerful forearms, big, powerful thighs, trademark rolled up left sleeve, and great eyes. A 100% certified slapper. The inside edge. One and oh. Next nope. offering misses. And that's ball two. That's and that three. misses as well. Fought off foul. And there's a base hit to left. Rounds third, headed for the plate. The tag, and he's safe. Josh Gibson against the big train himself, Walter Johnson. What a matchup. Ball and one. there's a ball. Ball one, no strike. And a foul ball. Here comes a pitch. Swung on, belted. Johnson will turn and watch it fly. A huge home run by Josh Gibson.
Well, as some of you may know, night baseball originated in the Negro Leagues in 1930. And I guess you could say we owe it to night baseball for us landing on a phenom named Josh Gibson. As the story goes, the Homestead Grays catcher Buck Buick broke his leg tripping on the guide wire that held the portable light system into place. Judy Johnson goes into the stands and pulls out a young Josh Gibson. And Gibson had already been a budding star in the amateur world of baseball in Pittsburgh. And Judy Johnson pulls him out, puts him in the uniform, he gets behind the plate, and needless to say, Buck Ewing never got his job back. But hey, it's no embarrassment to lose your job to Josh Gibson because now you've got a legendary story as well. Josh Gibson stepping in now. The pitch. And yeah. ball one. Yeah. Up the middle. Lays out. Oh, it's off his glove. And they'll score first. It's one zip. That's down and away. That one missed. And the righty deals. Now a fly ball to right center. It one hops off the wall. Should be extra bases. Across is the runner from first. And they take a two run. The legendary Buck O'Neill would describe Josh in this manner. That he had the eyes of Ted Williams and the power of Babe Ruth rolled into one dynamic package. You see, his outs were, as we say in the sport, were loud outs. I think about a story that Buck O'Neill also shared. He said a young ball player had just joined the Kansas City Monarchs. They're playing the Homestead Grays. Kid walks by the bench and sees an old broken bat in front of the Grays' dugout. Picks it up, and he's going to tease Josh. He said, Josh, this must be your old bat. Josh Gibson turns and shows him the faded out area on the sweet spot of his bat. And he says, son, I don't break bats. I wear them out. Just off the outside edge. Late swing fouled off. One down, base is empty. Two balls, one strike. The count two and one. Hammer, base hit. Welcome back to Mulebach Field. And now Josh Gibson. In the air, out towards left center. And that gets down into the gap. Buck O'Neill, who was around the game for seven decades, said he only heard the distinct crack of the bat said the ball made a different sound coming off these players' bats. Three players. One was the sweet swing of the legendary Babe Ruth. The other was Bo Jackson. 
and the third of this dynamic trio, Josh Gibson. The lore and legend that surrounds this almost mythical-like ball player is second to none. There's the story of the ball that he launched into orbit in Pittsburgh, and the next day he was called out when it came down in Philadelphia. Only Josh Gibson. Josh Gibson stepping in now. Day back to work. Smash to center, way back, and you can forget it. Home run. Gibson's power was extraordinary. In 1936, the power hitting catcher hit 84 home runs in a single season in 170 games against all levels of competition. He is still believed to be the only man to ever hit a ball completely out of Yankee Stadium. He hit one in the polo grounds that they estimated to travel over 600 feet. That's the kind of power that we're talking about. He could check swing and hit the ball out the ballpark. They don't measure sections of the ballpark where Josh hit balls. No, no, they look at landmarks. They say, you see that tree over there? Josh hit one over there. You see the barn over there? Josh hit one over that barn. You see those train tracks? Josh hit one over the train tracks. It was power personified. Josh Gibson, did he really hit a fair ball out of Yankee Stadium? Yes, he did. Uh, uh, Josh was one of those uh, superhuman people like that, if you want me to tell you the truth. There's that. Back here with my pal Singy. Now at the plate, Josh Gibson. The wind and the pitch. And that one is lifted in the air. Could be extra bases. And that's going to roll to the wall. Around second now as they still don't have it. He's not stopping. On his way home. Save. He comes all the way around. The year is 1942. And it's not any old game. It's the Negro Leagues World Series. The Kansas City Monarchs against the Homestead Grays. And it's an epic showdown. Satchel Paige and his friend, Josh Gibson. The Monarchs were winning the game 4-2 in the bottom of the ninth, two outs, when Satchel gives up a two-out triple to a guy named Jerry Benjamin. Satchel calls Ty. His nickname, famously, for Buck O'Neill, was Nancy. Satchel says, Nancy, you know what I'm fixing to do? Buck said, yes, Satchel, you're going to get this guy out so we can go back to the hotel. He said, no, nah, Nancy, I'm going to walk Howard Easterly. I'm going to walk Buck Leonard, and I'm going to pitch to Josh Gibson. Buck looks at Satchel. He says, Satchel, don't be facetious. He said, well, you can call it what you want, but that's what I'm going to do. He walks Howard Easterly. He walks Buck Leonard. Now everybody knows what's going down. And so Satchel calls time again. But this time, he motions for the Monarch's trainer to come out. Now, the trainer is part of the show. He's got a glass in his hand. And Buck says he drops something in the glass, and the glass begins to fizz. Satchel drinks it down. He lets out a belt. Now he is ready. Satchel looks at Josh. He says, Josh, I ain't going to try to trick you. I'm going to throw you three fastballs. 95-mile-an-hour fastball, call strike one. Josh never moves the bat. 99-mile-an-hour fastball, call strike two. He said, now, Josh, I ain't going to throw any smoke at your yoke. I'm going to throw a pee at your knee. 100-mile-an-hour fastball, call strike three. Satchel, who stood about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, he stretched out. He says, Nancy, nobody. Nobody hit Satchel Page's fastball. But Buck O'Neill says the very next year, Satchel tried to get a fastball past Josh. He said Josh hit the ball so hard, 
you know how the pitcher goes through his follow-through? He says Satchel never got a chance to come up. So the ball went right over the top of his cap. And as Josh is circling the bases, Satchel's still down here. He never comes up. And he looks over at first base and he says, Nancy, a fella could get killed out here. <laughs> Here's a matchup unlike any other. Josh Gibson squaring off against Satchel Paige. The pitch. All loaded up. Dangerous hitter at the plate. They need a strikeout. And you need a ball perhaps on the ground for a double play or get yourself a pop-up, something. But you've got to make some pitches. But if he can battle and get through this, he can earn some points. Foul ball still a one and two count. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. This one's blistered. No doubt about it. Out of here. Grand slam. The legendary Josh Gibson is credited with having hit nearly 1,000 home runs in his 17-year career in the Negro Leagues against all levels of competition, including major leaguers. He lit everybody up. He did not discriminate against any of the pitchers, as Gibson once said to a young teammate who got called out trying to steal second base to end the game. And Josh comes over to him and he says, son, what were you thinking about? He says, Josh, I was trying to get in scoring position. Josh looks at him and he shakes his head. He says, son, I'm in scoring position when I get in the batter's box. Josh Gibson stepping in now. And the first offering is not close. Josh Gibson had such high standards for his play, constantly measuring himself against Babe Ruth. If Ruth hit two homers, Gibson would say, well, then maybe old Josh better get out there and hit three. That one well upstairs, and it's 3-0. What strikes me with Josh is the reverence his teammates and opponents had for him. Satchel Page once said, you look for his weakness, and while you're looking for it, he's liable to hit 45 home runs. Kicks and fires. Right side. Smith sizes this one up. Brings it in. Runner tagging from third. It's a sack fly as he... And welcome back to the ballpark. And now the catcher comes up to him. Josh Gibson. Swings through that. 0-1. And that one almost hit him. Looking to get the tying run on base. Bases. And the tying runs at second base with a double. Out of all the players that I wish I could have seen play live, 
Josh has to be at the top of the list. I wish I could have seen him swing that bat. Because by all accounts, he had no weaknesses. Yet while you're sitting there looking for an area where you think you can get him out, he will have hit 40, 45 home runs by that time. And the power was almost mythical-like. Oh, but let me tell you, it was very real. I can think of younger days. Josh Gibson dies when he was only 35 years old. He died as a result of a brain tumor. He would eventually succumb to that brain tumor on January 20th, 1947. Ironically, the same year that Jackie Robinson breaks baseball's color barrier. Josh Gibson would have hit home runs in any league, in any era, had he been given the opportunity to do so. This gentle giant who was born in Luna Vista, Georgia, who would call Pittsburgh home until the day that he passed away, is arguably the greatest combination of power and average this game has ever seen. And Gibson slugged his way into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1972, fittingly alongside his Thunder Twin teammate, Buck Leonard. Can you stop the rain? Fall